How's it going guys? Today we're going to be going over another leak code question. Today our question is from Amazon and it's called Binary Tree Paths. Alright guys, today our question is called Binary Tree Paths. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon and a problem description says, given a binary tree, return all root to leaf paths. It tells us as a note that a leaf is a node with no children. So if we're given this example here, a tree that has one, two, three, and five, we'd want to output the strings, one arrow, two, arrow, five, and one arrow, three. And the reason for that is because if you look at every single uh, branch, we're basically taking the current node, adding its value to a string. If it has a child, we're adding an arrow. And then we're you know, constantly recursively traversing this tree or somehow traversing this tree going to the children of the current node and adding its children's value to the current path. So the explanation says all root to leaf paths are one, two, and five, uh, and then one and three. So how do we actually go about doing this problem? Well, we're kind of talking about it out loud now, so let's think about what we're doing. So at every single instance, we're taking the current node's value, and then we're moving to its children if it has children, right? So if it has two children, we're gonna to move to the left and the right child. If it has one child, we're just gonna to move to that child. And if it has zero children, then we're done, right? Once we actually have the path, we need to make sure that we add that string that represents the path to some sort of list because that's what we need to return. So I think a good way to probably do uh, this problem here is we can basically start at the root of the tree, add the current node's value to the path that we're on, and then kind of constantly traverse its subtrees if it has children, constantly adding the next child's value to the path that we currently have. So a good way to do that is just with like a simple BFS or DFS. So today we'll do a DFS. Um, and so you guys kind of know this, but I like to write shell functions that kind of just do simple, simple work at the very beginning. And then we call a magical recursive function that will do our work. And then we just return whatever we need from the problem. So let's start that uh, now. So the first thing we need is a list of strings that's gonna represent our path. So let's make a variable called paths. So list of strings, it's gonna be called paths and it's equal to a new array list. And now again, this is the shell function. So we're just gonna do simple error checking. So for example, if we don't have a root, right? So if our root is null, we have no work to do. So we could just return our paths. So if our root is null, then we could return our paths. And otherwise, this is where we have some sort of work to do, right? So if we have some sort of work to do, we said that we're gonna call a magical recursive function that's gonna give us our answer, and then we're gonna return our answer. So let's write that recursive function now. So we're gonna say DFS, that will be the name of our recursive function. We're calling it DFS because we're doing a depth first search on our tree. And what do we need for our DFS? Well, we need our root of our tree, so we always have a reference. We're gonna need a string, right? Because that's gonna represent the current path at every recursive call. And then we're also gonna need our paths uh, array list so that we can add any path we find find to that paths array list. Great. And so now once that recursive function returns to the shell function, all we should have to, hopefully have to do is return our paths. Great. So now that's it for our, our shell function. And now we just need to write our recursive function. So let's do that now. So we said public, it's called, uh, it's not going to return anything, right? We're just going to add the paths that we find to our paths variable. We called it DFS and we're taking a tree node called root, we're taking a string that's gonna represent our current path, so we're gonna call it path, and then we're taking a list of strings, and this is gonna be called paths. Great, so now let's go back through our example and let's think about how we can actually write the code to solve this problem. So the first thing we need to do at any given iteration, right, if we've reached this recursive function, we definitively have a node because we had this error checking, right? So now if we're inside this recursive function, we could definitely take the value of the current node, which we definitely need, right? So at first we're gonna be at the root of the tree and we need the trees, uh, the roots value, right? So we could just simply, first and foremost, just take that value and add it to our string called path. So that's as simple as saying path plus equal roots value. Great, so now this is like the interesting cases that we need to start thinking about. So we could be in a couple different cases, right? We could be at the beginning of the tree, we could be in the middle of the tree somewhere, or we could be at the end of the tree. So let's think about it uh, kind of where we're just at the beginning or the middle of the tree, right? If we're at the beginning, or actually let's think about our base case first, because this is a recursive function. The first thing we want to think about is our base case. So when do we actually definitively have a path? Well, that's when we've reached a leaf node, right? Because it wants all root to leaf paths. So if we're at a leaf node, we just need to add 
our path string to our path, right? We're done, we have no more work to do, we have no more nodes to traverse. So let's check that case. So if our roots left child is null, and our roots right child is null, then that means that we're at a leaf node currently, so all we have to do is take our current path and add it to our paths array. So we could say paths.add path, and then we could just return from our function, because again, we have no other children to traverse because we're at a leaf node. Great, okay, so now if we're not at a leaf node, right, if we're at the beginning of the tree or anywhere in the middle of the tree and we're not at a leaf node, what do we need to do? Well, we need to traverse both the left child and the right child if they exist, right? So if they do exist, let's traverse them. And we could just have quick checks to see if they exist, right? So if root.left is not equal to null, then that means that we need to continue traversing that left subtree. So that's as simple as just doing a DFS on that left subtree, right? So again, this is going to be our recursive call. So we could say DFS of the root's left child. We want our path, but we also want to add to our path an arrow, right? Because between every single node's values, we want an arrow. So we can add an arrow, and then we also need to pass our paths. Great, and so then same thing, right? For any given node that we're currently on, we need to make sure we also traverse the right subchild if we have a right subchild. So we can do the exact same thing. So if root.right is not equal to null, we wanna run a DFS on the current node's right child. We wanna to add to our path the arrow, because that's what our problem wants. We also want to pass our paths. Great, so now hopefully when all this code is done, and when all these recursive calls bubble back up to the top recursive call in our shell function here on 17, uh, we will actually have populated all the root to leaf paths. So now let's quickly talk about our runtime. So our runtime, we have all these recursive calls, right? And we're gonna traverse every single node in our tree. So we could say that this is O of N for our runtime, where N is the total number of nodes in our tree. And then in terms of the space complexity, we'd also say that this is O of N, right? Because our recursive stack could go as deep as the height of the tree, and the height of our tree could actually be the entire tree. So our runtime is gonna be O of N, and our space complexity is also gonna be O of N for this problem. So let's run this code and make sure that it works. Awesome, and it does. So guys, that's how to solve binary tree paths in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys next time. Zero, 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 zero,